two digesters and they make the gas. The gas goes up to the top and it goes down to the engine. So the engine makes electricity and in making electricity you've got to keep it cool so you have as much heat as you have, ele as you have electricity, 40% of heat. So the heat, we bring it up here to a heat exchanger and if that tank falls a degree, she opens the valve, brings it around here, takes some back. So these three are always kept 38 degrees all the time by computer. And that's one of the problems with uh, biogas and the CHP. We produce gas and we put it into an engine, but only 40% of it goes off to the grid. The rest of it is heat. Now I can use the heat here from the pig farm because I have a summertime you can't, but you have a waste of heat. Whereas what we're looking at doing now with gas networks is you make the gas, you clean the gas, and you put the gas into the grid. So the gas now goes to Dublin, and whoever takes it out, takes the heat, and takes the electricity, takes everything. That's one of the issues I see with the uh, new policy they're looking at, take lanes for uh, the, the plant. They're taking in wood chip. They're burning it to produce electricity. With 70% of the, of the heat goes into the River Shannon and 30% of the electricity. And it has been doing, it has been doing that now for 20 or 30 years. And it shows you that in reality you need for private enterprise needs to get involved with them because the ESP in, in Lanesborough built uh, glass houses about 25 years ago. And the biggest cost in running the glass house is heat. And they had the heat for nothing. And they still didn't work. And here we are in Ireland bringing in tomatoes from Holland because Holland has cheap gas from the North Sea. We had free heat and we were there worse. But it wasn't necessary if you were a monopoly like ESP. You didn't have to worry about it because you're making an electricity. But if I feel the heat should be captured.